everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's Into Where. It's our show where we review things in the world of television. Today we are reviewing Tom Swift, the entire series, because sad to say, Tom Swift was a short-lived spinoff from Nancy Drew, which we've also covered here on, on What's Into Two from Action X. And it's a bummer. It's it's really a bummer. You know, this was supposed to be the beginning of the Drew universe, as we as I've been monitoring it for the past year and a half now. It's very unfortunate that the show ended here. It definitely was not my plan to be doing a definitive series review this too early, but you know, it is what it is. You know, things are changing in the world of the CW, also many other things in the, the world of entertainment, just... Um, new decisions are being made in this brand new landscape, and you know, this is just one of the growing pains that Tom Swift just doesn't, it didn't meet the snuff for the, for what the CW was looking for, and also it's upcoming new Overlords, the, the Nexus star, the Nexus star, Nexus star, whatever they're gonna call themselves, I really don't know anymore. Um, so today we are spoiling everything from Tom Swift, the entire first season, the entire show, whatever you want to call it. This is spoil, um, spoiler Phil, so... If you haven't seen any episodes of Tom Swift yet, uh, I believe they're going to come on an HBO Max at some point in the future. I know you can catch them all right now on the CW app for free, so you can go check them out. All 10 episodes are alive. We've also done re episode reviews for each one of those, so if you want to see the progressive journey of my overall thoughts of the of the episodes, you can go check it out. But this is mainly talking about the whole show, the whole season, whatever you want to, what, what, want to call it, into one uh, cohesive, like, th what was the overall story? What was the overall pitch? And first impression aside, uh, going into this show, you know, I like the character, you know, um, Titan Magnus, who put, portrays Tom Swift. He did a very good performance in Nancy Drew, but we're not going to review his performance in that show. We're reviewing his performance here. For most of the time, I feel like this show definitely was thinking too much of the bigger picture instead of trying to keep it more self-contained, where... Sometimes you get a little bit too overbrace of thinking that you're going to be able to continually tell your story instead of telling one complete story. Honestly, when I began episode one, I felt like this was going to be more like, okay, this is going to be a self-contained story. There really isn't going to be much for them to like really do in terms of like, how do we write off multiple seasons? And don't get me wrong. They did honestly have a plan or something and definitely it was going to be its own thing. It's, it was not Nancy Drew related. It was just going to be its own thing in the same universe. But for me, like, when I was, like, watching through it, it's, like, I think it was mostly setting up, like, too many things down the road, which, again, I feel like had this show gone in a second season, I feel like some of the things that this season was trying to set up would have had payoffs, but in reality, it was just, like, you were wasting the time with unnecessary, and I'm saying that in the end scheme of, like, we're not getting more stories out of this world, in the scheme of, you're setting up more plot lines for things you're going to explore down the road, but you never will. And as a cost of that, you kind of really n was not able to resolve this story as it is now. It, it is unfortunate. I, I said this before many times in the, in the final episode reviews that it is unfortunate that we had to lose some screen time on potential other storylines or wrapping up certain things just for the sake of having enough of a foundation for a potential season two that will never come. So this is one of those... It sucks to say is just uh, uh, just the, the cost of just forward thinking, forward planning that that sadly did not reach the conclusion that that what it was originally meant to be. And I feel like the show still had some good strengths. It still had some good strengths. The cast was all right. I, I don't think this was the strongest cast I've ever seen. I definitely do believe in their characters and their performance. It, it just was. It was way overstuffed. There was just way too many things going on. And honestly, for a show called Tom Swift, I was expecting this to be understuffed. I thought we were just going to be dragging on repeating trope but like no there was just so many things that we should have focused on but instead we just got more over stuffing the turkey it's like it's like the turducken like you're te you're, you're stuffing in a turkey in a bigger turkey like but in, in that case it's like you know you're trying to fulfill the bigger turkey down the road but in reality you forget the smaller turkey isn't really fully cooked yet and at the end result you're just gonna have a a sl not sloppy it's not it's definitely not a bad show i don't think it is i think it's at the end of the day it's okay it's not the best, it's not good, but it's not bad. It's okay. It's serviceable. For 10 episodes of television, it, for 10 hours, you will have an okay with time with it. It definitely is something that you can just easily finish in a day and then just never get to see it again. I don't think I'll ever see it again, to be honest with you. If the character does pop back in and Nancy Drew down the road, I would be glad. I don't know how you would explore that, to be honest with you, since you know Nancy Drew and Tom Swift are two completely different worlds at, at the time of this recording, so... Who really knows? But you never know. Like, the doors are always open. Like, you have this larger universe for a reason. Like, the Archieverse. Like, even though Sabrina and Katie Clean ended, they still pop in on Riverdale. Regardless if those are three thematically different shows, they still will make it work. So maybe they'll do the same for Tom Swift. We will see. Who knows? 
but getting into more deep deep into it more specifically on the story the overall story is Tom Swift is a very young inventor not very young but like t my age 22 23 around that around that time frame uh, he's done some very very well done things he kind of has a bit of the Tony Stark element in terms of just you know the playboy um, billionaire uh, Sometimes philanthropist, but mostly inventor. Uh, he mostly likes to sleep around, have all these eccentric parties, do these crazy, uh, childish things, and you know doesn't. Re but still gets the job done. But everyone loves him except for his dad, or at least that's what we kind of you know assume to believe, since he and his dad has always butt heads a lot of the time. Not because of the work ethic, but mostly because of the personality traits that you know he just doesn't think Tom is ready to like fully lead his company to the next generation to where it needs to be. Obviously, Tom, we know he can handle it, but is he there mentally to really lead? And that's kind of where the whole the whole show kicks off, when Tom picking up where the events of Nancy Drew left off for, for his character, where he was off looking for the material he needed to create the sa this um, spaceship all the way to Saturn and back for his dad so they can like really actually begin the feats of an like, inter- interspace travel like beyond you know earth and the moon like this is their this is their big bet and it works and then when they when they check in at the halfway mark it just explodes everyone just assumes the word and then it's it's an entire conspiracy right it's a race to save a life it's a race to kind of save the world it really isn't a save the world feat it's more like a revolution of the world kind of thing like no one's in danger really like yes people are dying it's like it's kind of weird when you get into like it's one of those weird cult not not really cult more like you know um organization type beliefs um that they all have a purpose they all have a stance but the problem is, is that you know uh they they're very so s slow in their ways and you're supposed to feel for them but at the end of the day again this is one of the things of like either you would have given this show a longer season or you know cut out some of the fat you would have made the villains even even the a better part. Because the one thing that I'll give TV shows more than movies is that movies, you only have a two, three hour window. Most of the time, you're spending time with your protagonist because that's all the time you can get. With a TV show, you're allowed to tell a bigger story. You're allowed to tell a longer story. Give more time to the characters. Let them develop more naturally. Then I'm not to say movies are rushing to develop it, but like, you know, you kind of have to make a really good case of like, how do we swiftly develop this, i.e. montages, but that's another, that's another thing for another day. But, for this case, um, to go back to the overstuffedness, like, for me, TV shows, like, you know, a great protagonist, you need a great villain, you need a great adversary, and the persona was there, the personality traits for the villains were there, uh, in this case, the road back, and also their leader, Susanna, the, the, the elements are there, they're really much there, but there's just way too many much fluff, by the time we even get to Susanna as, like, really being the character, like, that we need her to be, it's not for that long. Yes, she does make a little bit of an impact, but we don't get to see that much of it. Even the moments where we're supposed to be getting her flashbacks, supposed to be getting her story to why the robot even thing. When we even got to that point, it was just, we didn't even get that. It was mostly, like, just expo exposition for the sake of, like, well, we need to explain her story. But it doesn't make, really make sense for, like, you know, telling a good story. It doesn't. Because we're supposed to feel for these characters. Because uh, most of the times at the end of the day, I, I mostly agree with the gray method. Which is basically, there really is no good. There really is no evil. It's basically, it's two sides that have their own, their own like, beliefs and their own... Um, what they believe, what they stand for, and what they're fighting for, and then they come into blows with each other. It's not really good. It's not really evil. But the thing is, is that the Robeck has always been painted as a villain because all they done was murder people. All they done was like really sabotage things. And like, yes, they, they are stating their motivation that it's not because they're doing it out of being negative. It's because they're doing it for a grander purpose to be able to prevent something bad down the road. But they don't really explain that. They don't really showcase that much. And again, I know the end of the, day, the show is called Tom Swift. I do get that. But at the end of the day, like this is Tom Swift finding people that really has to be worthy of his. Um, of his, I, I kind of compare it to One Punch Man, where like you know, I, I I don't read the manga. I just watch the two seasons of the anime. But like even that in that front, like you got to make the villains stand out in a way that it would make sense for them to be called villains to the hero. We're like yes, in that case, Saitama can easily just kill any of them with like one or two punches, most of the time one punch, man, but according to joke aside, in this case, like Tom Swift is a well-known inventor. Yes, we do get to see his like um, struggles and like his development and his, um, him trying to come to grips with each other himself and like realize his true potential that isn't just inventing. 
Um, but at the end of the day, like, even when we know all this about him, like, you know, he's still able to save the day. He still finds a solution at the, at the, at the end of the story. And in this case, it's like, you know, it just does improve, like, how is Susanna Big Fred? Because most of the time throughout the show, it's like, we're supposed to be fighting the road back, but we, we take on someone else. Or a villain of the week, or just a random person, or as a deeper motivation. It's like, it just doesn't make sense to, like, come on. Like, we're trying to tell the story, and you're saying that this is the main fret. But you don't really focus that much on the main fret, in my opinion. That's, that is just how it is. Um, but story-wise, it's it's alright. Like, the premise is fine enough. It's just, it just doesn't really, it doesn't really give you everything you need for it. They're just giving you um, somewhat of the main dish, and giving you a lot of entrees for, like, future main dishes. But that, of course, obviously, we don't, we don't really get to see them in the future. Character-wise, going from, like, just the main cast itself, um, like, the core three, um, Zazie, who, um, her actress, Ashley Murray, I've seen her plenty of times in Riverdale, so I know, and Key Clean as well, that's a show, too. Um, I know she can get the job, like, she plays the sassy best friend uh, with, with an actual goal, and, you know, you actually get the feel for her, and, the, and um, I, I do like her friendship with Tom, I really do. It, it definitely is, like, you know, one of those stories where even I can relate to it, where um, it's mostly just be, be, being grateful for what you have and, and now knowing uh, how hard you have to work to be able to achieve it for yourself. Because in the show, um, Tom and her were childhood best friends. Zazie did not have the same advantages or came from the same background as Tom. But Tom's parents like really considered her like a daughter to them and they really like made her part of the family and they gave her some opportunities that she wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And not to say that Tom gave, gave it to her on a silver platter, but she was given more opportunities than not everyone has it. She doesn't take that for granted. And throughout the show, she her, her, her goal mostly comes from being just Tom's friend and just his support system, but also on the, on the factor of, hey, I'm my own person. Like, you know, like Tom worked hard to get to where he is. It's not to say she just got, got her position at Swift Enterprise. It's just like, you know, with, with a phone call whatsoever. Uh, at least they don't really state that. But still, it's along the lines of she knows, like, she has more to offer to the table. She doesn't have to be second fiddle to anyone. She doesn't have to be handed, handed anything. She can work for it herself. And that was mainly her goal throughout the season. The other thing is that it, it, the, my only issue was that she can't, kind of fell into that, into that similar, like, trap of, like, What's the romantic angle? Because, you know, every character needs to have a romantic angle. Her is, she's dating a pseudo-villain. I say pseudo because it's a, it's a forceful position, to be honest with you, where uh, she's she's interested in a congressman, but she's also interested in Tom's bodyguard, who has his own emotional baggages. And to see that contradict itself into, like, some sort of weird-ass love triangle. And I said this in the episode 11 review, not the episode 11, episode 8 review, where, like, I felt so I felt so emotionally um, attached to that situation because I felt that before where you where you really like someone and then by the time you finally admit your feeling it's too late someone already banged them and I'm like okay that's not the right way to say it but like it's almost akin to it in my opinion my personal history so uh, it is what it is by that point but uh, besides that it, it seems that like even Zazie's aware like why am I doing this like this is not something I should be handling and then in the next episode she kind of just falls into that. It's a weakness, and you know, everyone has their, that romantic weakness where, like, you know, deep down, this isn't something that's important, this isn't something I should be dealing with right now, there's all the things I should be putting my attention to and my time to, but it's just something that, it's a trap, like, you just fall for it, and you really can't get out of it till you realize it almost too late. But that was in, in the case of her character. Isaac has always been, a, was, I, Isaac was presented weirdly. Where it, it, it's it's I think I think it's more akin to like the show having the issue of like spreading out the attention where he's the only character that has had a much more bigger backstory because he, he is older than Tom and Zazie so there's a lot more to his background he was in the army he he did some stints before he eventually became the the Swift's bodyguards eventually bonding with with Tom and then eventually going from that point onward the thing is that like the the weird thing for me is that he was the only character that actually really had flashbacks like he actually had flashback storylines where we could try to understand his character more try to figure out where he's coming from mostly in relation to like his relationship with, Z with Zavi or also his connection with Tom and you know with the Swift family at large and I do get like they were trying to paint him like as an emotional story like it's the tradition like he's the bodyguard but he's also the best friend like the male best friend or, the, or like the best friend. I do get that they were trying to they were trying to aim for that for him, but it never really was sold on me. It never really was. They a lot of things they mentioned about him was kind of like throwaway things that like honestly again I said this before like instead of like giving Lino this like pseudo robotic storyline that doesn't really go anywhere with the season's end, 
you should have just kept. It's just like you could have given given that time to more to, to Isaac, so we can get more about his character, more about uh, what is his mental thing is. Because when you go into the army, I'm not trying to say this is like a a, a, a cliche like oh you're in the army, you have some sort of PTSD. They did explore that in the show a little bit, but it it was in a weird flashback method where like it kind of feels like a flashback, but it kind of doesn't like feel like a flashback. It was, it, it was like normally like what editing wise, I mean it's just because I have a lot of error on the brain. It's more was all in lines like, oh, I was expecting some sort of like gray tint or some sort of like white tint, like just implicate like this is a flashback, you know. So we're trying to get more about this character that you know the main show won't really get to like really organically fit into. And even when we got that, like it was weirdly, it was weirdly placed. It was weirdly done, in my opinion, at least. So it didn't really do much service to the character itself. As for Tom himself, I think yeah, yeah, Titus Mac is first of all amazing body. Second of all, CW, why the heck do you show? Like, you give Tom, like, such a revealing close for a chest. Like, we get it. He has a great check. He has a great body. We get it. We don't need to see it every episode. It's like Stephen Amell, like, um, I, I'm sorry for another Arrow reference, but just imagine in every episode, he has to be shirtless. For some reason, he has to be shirtless. And I'm like, okay, go be shirtless, okay? Uh, however, that'll make sense of the story. That That's what we need. We need, we need, we need some sex appeal over here, because that's all the CW is half the time. We need sex appeal. But was, so for him, like for Tom Sweat, I think yeah, I you know in terms of like this being the show about Tom Sweat, I think he's the the character that gets the most development, obviously, and I think it's more well done. It's a little weirdly paced out, in my opinion, where like you know it's like every week it's like he has to be reminded that he there's a larger thing that he has to do. Like it's not just saving his dad, it's not just stopping the robot. It's also focusing on the legacy that the Swift family has built. It's also about inheriting that legacy, becoming the person you need to be in order to. Uh, become that become that um, person. It takes a while. Like it does that. It's not one, two, three. And there is a slight shift in terms of, like the Tom we see in episode one to the end of episode ten. Like there is a slight shift. It's not too grand in in the spe spectrum, but because he's still his core self. But he's like more mature. He's more responsible. He's more aware of like there is a larger world out there that isn't focusing on Tom. But but besides that, again, it's weirdly paced. It's weirdly it's weirdly um, set up at some points where like you know. It seems like a couple of weeks, it, like it repeats the same lesson of like you know how um, Thomas needs to be self sufficient, self sufficient, or he has to rely on too many people, or has to rely always on the same um, assets or whatever. And it eventually, it's just that weird thing. Like I get the development, I know what they're trying to do there, but it's just that weird, you know, it's just weirdly done in my opinion. And again, whether or not that was because they just had the ten episode order, just that was the way they were pitching it out. Uh, I really don't know, but it is what it is by that point. Um, as for the other aspects I didn't like about it, I, I think, again, I, I've repeated this many, many times, like, the biggest problem I have with the, with the series, and especially with this plan for season, was, again, they were setting up way too many things for season two. Uh, for example, right now, I'm, I'm going to list all of them, it, it, it's a lot of them, they were setting up a future storyline where um, Tom's dad did survive the events of the show, but he got sent to the future. Uh, how does Tom, how does Tom future factor into things with him being at risk? Um, Claire, the, the current temp CEO of, of Swift Enterprises, he, him basically, her basically drugging Tom's mom to get secret information. Tom's mom's secret life, apparently, similar to how Tom's dad was the focus on this season. This mysterious cotillion, this mysterious organization that, that Tom's mom's also a part of that she's trying to get Tom into. Oh, uh, yeah, Lino's storyline where, like, he has some sort of, like, you know, um, genetic ability or some sort of, like, you know, weird mechanical ability from his mom. It, it's just, like, there's just so much going on, but, like, you, you didn't really, like, they were just setting those up, and they didn't really re remember, like, okay, Tom needs to go off the, the, the space capsule. He needs to fight the road back. He needs to, like, get, get his dad back. It's, like, focus on the story you're trying to tell this season, and if you are able to get a season two, like, We'll focus on that later, but like, don't put too much emphasis of like, we're gonna pay this off in season two. Like, I get that. That's smart forward thinking that like, you want to plant seeds so that like, it's a bigger payoff. The problem is, is that it's still television. It's still Hollywood. Like, there's no guarantee you're gonna come back for a second season. There's no guarantee you're gonna come back for a sequel or a spin-off. There's no guarantee the story is gonna continue. So why not wrap up the story you have right now rather than continue that? Try to continue that story elsewhere uh, without any sort of guarantee that it's gonna happen. Because this show came out in like. A very weird time place in life where like you know COVID was a thing um it was under a lot of development when was that going to come out there's just a lot of factors that they didn't really think about at that point where if it was me steering the ship in terms of, like creatively i would have been like yeah scrap all those storylines i mentioned before just focus on the core storyline focus on these characters more um and then if we're lucky to get season two yeah we'll focus on that but you they, it was mostly like setting up more stuff that we didn't get to see at the cost of the story they were trying to tell this time around 
that was my, that was my primary issue right there. And also another thing is that, and this is just kind of like a weird bias thing in my opinion. So you know, if you call the show Tom Swift, where he's like a billionaire inventor, and you have a lot, of, you have a lot of like cool, like key frame items where you have the fancy car, the fancy shoes. The fancy tech, but we don't really get to see much of the fancy tech. There's there was a time where I felt like this was a very budgeted show, which to be honest with you, this this, this definitely felt like a very budgeted show where you get a very handful of sets on location half the time, and then I think the most budgeted mode, which again I I I know they were trying to write it off as a comedic effect, but one was like I think it was episode six or seven where like they finished this entire adventure with a, with a space capsule piece. But it ends up being like a joke, like, you know, like, oh, they've been through this hilarious situation that, like, the way they were describing it, like, I think that was appeasable. You could have done that. We, we didn't really need to see Tom and uh, his friends take on, taking care of a baby. We didn't really need to see that, in my opinion. We also didn't need to see, like, a, a weird dinner dinner party game episode. We, we didn't really need to see that, like, you know. I'm just, like, Tom is supposed to be a fun character. He is fun during the show, but, like... If you're describing these, like, fun premises where, like, Tom goes on these, uh, 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 like, epic adventures, like, beforehand. Like, not in terms of, like, saving the world, but just, like, fun, you know, billionaire adventures. Like, that would have been a f much more fun show to see, in my opinion. Like, you know, like, the whole show, like, when I wrapped episode one, and I'm sorry if I'm going all over the place here. Like, this would pitch me, like, we're going on a on a, a, U a country tour. Like, we're going to go around the states, trying to find the peace. That's honestly what I thought the show was going to be at episode one. Because there was very limited marketing. There was very limited footage that was being available to us. And that's kind of what, what my sense was going to be like, that we were going to fight the road back all over the United States, and then we'll eventually come back to the Swift Manor at some points down the road. But we always went back to the Swift Manor. We always kind of skipped over the actual meteor, meteor piece itself. It just it just focused more on like the wrong things and not much on the right things, in my opinion. That's just in my general at the end of the day. I will say this, um, the early episodes were, were the best, especially the last one too, with just the the speech and just the character development in that moment. The middle episodes were kind of like murky. Just it, it just didn't do it for me. It didn't really sell me on anything. And, you know, that just kind of left me wanting more. But just in the sense of, like, feeling empty about what I was given instead of, like, actually getting what I wanted and then wanting more. It's it, it's in that it's in that, um, in that flip-flop type of thing. But overall, for me, to kind of just r wrap it up for home, Tom Swift, it is a show that it is a show. It definitely had a, it, it tried to do something, it succeeded some of the time, failed most of the time. It's one of, it's going to be one of those, like, you wish to see more, but, you know, uh, you kind of get what you get and you kind of have to accept it and kind of got to move on with life, you know. I'm pretty sure the cast and the crew had a fun time, you know, with this show for the X amount of weeks, X amount of months they were shooting this show. I'm pretty sure they had a lot of fun. Um, I would have been, I would have loved to see more, just to see more of development, more of these storylines that they were spending time on actually pay off. It does suck we're not going to get that anytime soon, but at the end of the day, you know, they did what they had to do, and, you know, I'll respect them for that. I'll respect them for that. Um, so for me, in my opinion, I would, if you're bored one day and you just are looking for something to watch, I recommend it. If you're really like, is this like a must-see, must-watch TV product? It really isn't. It is, and I would go watch Nancy Drew again any day of the week, which um, I'm going to have to soon because for season four coming up, but that's a different story for another day. Uh, but again, let me know in the comments below. What did you think of Tom Swift as a show? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let's comment down below. Let's talk about it there. And that's going to do it for me, and this has been the end of our Tom Swift coverage here on Action X's What's in the Two. It's been a very interesting 11 weeks. It has been. It was fun as well. Very interesting. Very hot. Wearing a suit, a pseudo suit every week. It was fucking hot. It is still hot today. I am sweating right now. You don't see it right now, but I'm sweating because it's, a, it's a, you know, for the sake of audio quality and such like that, you know the Jeff already. Um, but again, this has been fun. Again, if you haven't watched Tom Swift yet and you just got bored about everything, but you still want to see the show, uh, we've done all 10 episode reviews right now on YouTube.com slash Action X, so please go check them out there. Uh, please also subscribe because we're also doing... On What's of the Tube, High School Musical, the Musical of the Series, Season 3 episode reviews each and every week after Brain Ups is on Disney+. Plus. So go check them out there. That will be our current review series until we come back later this month with Stargirl. So that's another thing for you to keep your eyes on. Uh, but again, this has been What's of the Tube from Action Egg. Please subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash Action Egg videos like I mentioned before. Please also ring the bell for notification when our next episode review is live. Please also follow us on social media to so have any sort of updates we may have for the channel. Please also like, favorite, share if you want to. But again, thank you so much for all you members of the Swift Squad. It's been a fun 11 weeks. 
It really has been. Uh, if you're also members of the Drew Crew, I'll see you on 2023 for the Season 4 episode reviews. I can't wait for those to come back. Uh, for that front, we are going to be doing a definitive Season 1 review, but I'll be also next year as well. There's a lot on the bandwagon this coming fall, so stay tuned. But if you really do like me, please, again, subscribe to us to see more of us. Um, but until we see each other again in the future or beyond, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and as always, peace out. Peace out. I was, why did I say peace off? <laughs>